Page 32, March 2 4 time, no sharps or flats, we're in the key of C major. And it's like a left, it's like a march. Left, right, left, right. We'll get to all that junk later. Let's get the notes and the rhythms first, starting with the right hand. One and four on the G here. And these dotted rhythms, that short note needs to be short. You can actually almost make it short, short. But don't turn it into a triplet, whatever you do. Make it short. One, two. Technically, it's one e and a two e and a one e and a, or I go one and two and one and two. So I can feel it like that, or I just make it a short note. One. There's a lot of times in the music of this period, we still do, where you'll exaggerate the dotted rhythms. Either you'll make them longer or shorter, depending on the mood of the piece. In a march, it has to be crisp, it has to be right there, you would shorten them. So you could play these almost like, a, uh, we haven't had dotted, double dotted rhythms or all that, but you can play that even shorter than a 16th note. The overall beat remains the same, you're just making that 16th note really short. And that's okay in this case. Just make sure the accent goes on the note after the short note, not on the short note. No. Yeah, param to there. Now let's get back to what I was doing here. One and two and three and four and come up the third finger. I don't like that fingering. I would suggest here the third major rather than sec sec third finger. Use second finger. I know you just use second finger for an eighth note, but you got time. Just come up and use third fin or second finger again on the C. That way you can do the other one four, and now you're ready for two five. You don't have to. This is a very fast piece. I don't want to have to go. That's dangerous because the left hand's busy, so I don't want to be moving around if I don't have to. Here I don't. There, it all falls together. That's one of the beauties of learning a piece all connected first, so you get a fingering that works out all connected, because most of the time that will help you out, especially on a fast piece. Sometimes you've got to change the fingering anyway, but most of the time, and that's my number one go-to thing, is connect the notes, can I get the, will the fingering work there? So I'm going to go there. And anywhere else in this march, that same passage, I do it the same way. So here, in the measure five, one and two. The third finger's good. One and four. Like just make those short notes. One and two and three and rest. And you do that again. Let's go to the top of page 33. You have a rest at the bottom of page 32. You got time to move up. Just come up here. One and two and one and. It's tied. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. We well, get practice at this and then an F natural in the last. Because they changed it. You're going to do something. And then one four. You just lift up, move. Left hand. Treble clef here. In the, so you're down here. They say two four. Same rhythm as the right hand on this part. One and two and three. And second finger again. And then here, measure five. Cross over here, three. And again, make those sixteenth notes short. Measure eight. One and two and Measure thirteen. You're down here. Crossover, and now 5-1. I find that a little awkward, especially this is a very fast piece. So uh, at the bottom there, in the last line on page 32, when they say here, crossover, and now 1. This is what, what bothers me, going to here. That's kind of dangerous when you're going fast. If it were a slow piece, I wouldn't worry about it. So I'm going to suggest we do this. At the beginning of the line there on measure 13 rather than 2, you just play the G. So you're in that position. 
Rather than two, I'm going to suggest you reach up and use third finger. And then two, and then one. I get them all in one hand position. Here. And now I'm in position to do that. Top of page 33, you're up here. One and two and three and four and. Isn't this fun? Try and get these notes down at the same time. And then come down. Put the hands together slowly. And I, again, I'm still playing everything legato, everything connected here. One and two. comes up. Top of page 33, you're up here. Again, I left the right, left hand up when I play the E there in measure, say 18. So again, it's 17. that G is tight. And then when I, when I play the E, I lift the left end up. Right there. So forth. You kind of get a handle on that and then get rid of the hesitations. You can go real slow. Speed isn't important right now. It's The beat needs to be a steady beat. No hesitations. No wrong notes. Then we can add in this, the accents and staccatos and things. Wrist for the accents here. And all of this is being done, well it's loud, you can kind of do it from the arm, but because it's so fast, you, you don't have time to use big muscles. So you're pretty much stuck with the wrist here at the beginning. Even though it's not staccato, the repeated chords, so you gotta play them disconnected anyway. Just don't play them short. And there's an accent. Give it a little extra. I mean, there's a natural accent on the first beat of each measure, but this gets extra. This is more. And you have, but not in the left hand. It's tricky starting with measure five. Connect the left hand, but the right hand to no slurs. Down, up, down, up. You don't have to play the second note short, you just have to disconnect from the next note. If they wanted a staccato, then it put a staccato dot there, so it's here. Again, at measure five, it's And that's really the articulation then. Let's go over to the top of page 33. Here, there's, not, there's an accent in the right hand. Give that a little extra. Not the left, just the right. And the staccato. I would connect the F sharp to the E. They don't say to. You could put a slight disconnect in there. Or it's just easier to connect it. So again, I connect the left hand. And then that's the count. See, that's the idea on these sl slurs. If they wanted the second note of a slur, staccato, they would say so. And they didn't do that on these others, so I didn't make them staccato. Here they do. And then back to what you were doing before. Uh, dynamic wise, well it's loud. Overall the piece is loud. It's just how loud is, are, is it? How loud are you? are varying your levels of loud. And that's really the top note of the right hand. And you go up to very loud. Not accident note was seriously very loud. 
you're staying very loud for the most part, I wouldn't stay very loud for the whole thing. As you come down in the second line, I'd come back down to louder, even moderately loud. You'd come down. Because you're settling down. And then you do it again. Start out on major 9, start out loud again. Bit there. Top of page 33, you're loud again. And you're thinking, well, why do they keep saying it's loud when you're loud already? And my point is because you don't have to stay loud throughout the whole thing. You're going to feel it eventually and you'll fluctuate, you'll change on how loud you are. But they're telling you definitely when you start each of these lines like that, you're loud. It's also part of the musical form. The stuff on page 32 is one section, the stuff on page 33 is a different section. And so when you start a new section, they got to give you all new instructions. So whether you need it or not, you're probably going to get a dynamic indication, hopefully. So you're starting there, loud, in the right hand. And that, that would be very loud for the G. And then they want you to crescendo. Well, you're going to go from loud to very loud. It's not twice as loud. Uh -uh. It's just up a little bit to very loud. Not a lot of difference between loud and very loud. I suggest a measure 21 to give you more room to grow that you come down to sort of loud. And so you got more room. To, so I'm going to do a measure 21. I'm going to come down to sort of loud. And I'm going to stay there for two measures or so. And then I'll come up a little bit to loud, and then that's very loud. Don't get very loud to there. So forth, and you end it very loud. This march means business, I guess. So huh? I'm assuming they won their battle or whatever it is. They're real proud of themselves, or they won. Okay. Now, speed wise. Vivace manon troppo means, Vivace means really fast. It's faster than Allegro. It's very fast. But manon troppo means not too much. Very fast, but not too much. In other words, don't get carried away. Feel it. It's a march. It's a fast march. One, two, one, left, left, right, left, right. Well, that's not exactly Vivace. I mean, that's left. That's almost an Allegro. But they went it very fast. So forth, You'd, you have to play it accurately, you have to play it under control. So don't go above your speed limit. As you get better with piano, you'll get faster. Save that for later. Play it accurately, whatever you can do with this. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics, not going to play it that loud, but we do, we will do the repeats on page 33. That page is played twice. So I'll give us four counts and let's try it together slowly. One, two, ready and go, and one and two.
repeat.